So following on with that thought process, looking at item number six, uh, we have to worry a little bit about what we call problem scaling. Um, and again, problem scaling has to do with the, the relative size difference between coefficients in your matrix, but it's not just the constraint and variable matrix that we're worried about. It's also the objective function. Um, so solvers like Garobi will recommend that your objective function value, which we call Z here in this example, Z should be usually between the absolute values of one and 10,000, just for uh, suitability in the, the solution techniques and working with you know, uh, um, the, the methods that are implemented in those solvers, you usually are going to want your objective value to be in this range no matter what the application. So let's say you're working on a problem where you're, look, you're, you're trying to schedule annual output uh, from some power generation system again. And your power generation system is nominally sized to be you know, uh, 100,000 watts, 100 kilowatts. Um, if you look at the production over the course of the year, the value of Z at every hour is gonna add up and you're gonna be orders of magnitude above the upper value that's recommended for the solver. So how do you deal with that? Well, one thing would be instead of using watts as your unit, you could use kilowatts or megawatts. And then by the time you get to the end of the problem, uh, you're kind of within this range. Uh, another way of dealing with this is just to take all the values um, in constraints, in rele relevant uh, constraints and objective function and divide them through by some scaling factor. Um, so often the solvers will do this, and we'll talk about that in a second. They'll do this automatically, but anytime you as a human, as an engineer or scientist who's formulating the, these problems, anytime you can put your knowledge of the system uh, into the formulation, it's going to be better than uh, aut an automated process that a solver can do. Um, so you always want to take the time to formulate, to reformulate the problem in such a way that the sol solver doesn't have to work as hard. So here in this example, just to show you what we mean by scaling, we've got our objective function and we have uh, maximization of this objective function in two variables, x1 and x2. And uh, we're introducing these two constraints where we say x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to 10 to the 7th, and x2 is less than or equal to 10 to the 6th. Here we see that the objective function value for these is going to result in a very large, uh, you know, a large, large order of magnitude. Um, x1 and x2 can both, you know, be pretty large, x2 can be pretty large. So we probably want to scale these constraints to reduce the maximum value of z. So how do we actually scale constraints? Well, let's look at an example where this is a little bit more clear. So here's two constraints. This is unrelated to the, the problem that's just been defined above. These are just two new constraints that we're, we're going to talk about. So let's imagine we have these two constraints. There's two variables involved. The first constraint involves uh, coefficients on the variables, on the linear terms of 10 to the minus 3 and 10 to the minus 5th, and the right-hand side of the equation is 10 to the minus 2. So there's, uh, within, this, within this constraint, there's an order of magnitude difference of uh, 3 on the coefficients, which is fine. So normally we want to keep our differences in orders of magnitude within 6, uh, just as a rule of thumb. So any, any coefficients that you have should be within 6 orders of magnitude of each other. Um, and ideally, you want them to be, um, let's say, within the range of 10 to the minus 3 up to 10 to the 6th power. That's kind of a rule of thumb for where you want these, uh, these coefficients to be. Okay, so we have these two constraints. The second constraint is um, similarly in, in terms of x1 and x2, but the orders of magnitude on the second constraint are now, say, 10 to the 5th on, both of the co on, on the coefficients for both of the terms and the right-hand side is 10 to the fourth. Again, the difference in order of magnitude within the coefficients in this constraint is just one. However, if you look at the difference between the first and second constraint, there's up to 10 orders of magnitude in difference in, in the values, particularly on the x2 uh, term. So this is gonna be really problematic as the, as the solver is moving through. You're gonna end up having uh, the solver is going to basically round off certain values that throw away the information that's needed to address this first constraint. 
Um, it's just too small compared to the rounding error and the numerical precision of the algorithm. So what we need to do is, uh, it's good for us as the problem formulators to go through and make sure that none of these constraints actually uh, you know, cause this type of a order of magnitude mismatch. So what we would do as, as careful modelers is go through and pick one of the constraints. You know, probably we're going to uh, uh, pick the one that's mo most out of bounds, but let's look at the second one here. So we're going to take the second one and replace it with our rescaled version of the same constraint. Notice that the relative difference or the relative order of magnitude between the left-hand side and the right-hand side are the same, yet um, it's, it's completely been rescaled so that it's consistent with the other coefficients that are going to be in the solution matrix. Um, so this is uh, one way to ensure that you don't end up with uh, you know, errors in the solution. It'll come back and say it's infeasible or unbounded. What that can mean is even in appropriately formulated project or, uh, programs, you can get these uh, infeasible uh, or unbounded type solutions because of the numerical precision in the, uh, in the solution. The other thing to point out here is that the tolerance that you use for solving the problem should correspond to the order of magnitude of the coefficients in the constraints and in the objective. Here, if we have uh, coefficients that are on the order of 10 to the minus 3, our tolerance for, for the solution should be uh, probably three orders of magnitude lower than the lowest coefficient. Um, so maybe it would be, you know, 10 to the minus 7 if you look at the right-hand side. But in any case, if we're using a default tolerance of maybe 10 to the minus third, but your coefficients are on that same order of magnitude, the solution that you get back is not going to be very reliable. A lot of this can be handled automatically through the solvers. Uh, again, the solver is not going to be able to rescale everything given that it doesn't know what you know about the problem, um, but there are automatic scaling flags in Gurobi and in um, CBC. In, for example, in Gurobi, the scaling option is called scale flag, and depending on the method that you specify, it will, uh, it will try to scale in increasingly aggressive ways, um, but as you scale more aggressively, you run the risk of um, of, of the problem not maintaining the same uh, formulation that you expect.